Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Poo. <laughs> right, hi everyone. This is a quick little revision video about um, powering systems, about some of the key things that you need to know. The good thing about this is a lot of this you will have learned in other subjects like science, uh, geography, other things. So hopefully none of this will be too um, di difficult for you. I'm going to cover some really odd bits of the specification, like batteries, um, in the hopes that they don't come up, but just in case, hopefully this video will help. So renewable energy may come up in the exam. There are seven main forms of renewables. So you've got things like wind, um, you've got hydro from water, you've got solar power, um, you've got wave power, tidal barrage, um, geothermal and biomass. So very, very quickly go through um, what these mean. So wind basically turbines are driven by blades that catch the wind, which um, generate electricity through a generator. Um, and we use a lot of that in the UK because it's quite a windy country. Um, hydro dams are usually built, um, built, I think it says across water not attract water, across the water. The stored water is then released uh, at certain points and what happens is turbines are then, they turn around as the water is released and that generates power. Um, it's popular in places like the Norway and US that have like lots of big uh, lakes and lots of uh, water reservoirs. Solar power being used quite a lot now in solar panels and things that are being added to people's houses. A photovoltaic cell converts the sun energy directly into electricity. Um, wave power uh, by the constant movement, the kinetic energy of the waves. Um, basically, um, it moves through a turbine that generates power. It's not very commercially viable at the moment, so something that they're obviously working on. Um, tidal barrage, a barrage is basically um, a like a, almost like a dam but it's something that blocks off an estuary so the sea coming into the into a river um, as the tide comes in and goes out the water movement turns turbines which generates power so you can see all of it is about turning turbines in some way you then have geothermal um, the heat from the earth heats up water to produce steam the steep the steam spins a turbine um, doesn't happen much in the UK, but places like Iceland that have lots of, um, uh, you know, like volcanic activity with heat coming through from the ground can use that kind of energy. We use a lot of biomass in the UK. So lots of organic matter such as wood, dried vegetation, crop residues are burned. Some crops are actually grown specifically for biomass. Um, so they're burned, it heats the water, produces steam, and therefore turns a generator. So these are all renewable forms of energy. So they are replaced and they are not coming from finite resources. So this is what needs to be happening more um, in the UK to get away from those finite resources and the use of fossil fuels. So really, really quickly, I'm hoping that this doesn't come up, but you could be asked about the uh, basic kind of steps of how a uh, fossil fuel powered um, energy is, is generated or electricity is generated. So we have coal, it arrives by a truck. The coal is burned, which then turns water into steam. So it's heated up in this pipe here, turns it into the steam. The steam then comes through here and that basically turns a load of turbines around. So imagine this is spinning around and that then goes into a generator, which makes electricity. The steam is then goes back through a tube here and that's what these huge towers do. They actually cool the, the steam and condense the water back down so that it can be used again in the system. So that's a very basic overview of how electricity is generated. Um, basically, the, the goal with all energy generation is to get something to turn a turbine, which then goes into a generator, which then will create electricity. Okay, so 
The reasons that we need to start moving away from finite non-renewable uh, resources, um, like coal, oil and gas, um, is they are finite. So here's some disadvantages just quickly before we do the advantages. Um, they will run out in the next few hundred years or so. Um, it has social environmental impacts. So, for example, um, social impact as in um, people having to, to move because things are being um, dug up. Um, social impact of there's lots of oil in the Middle East and that has a big social impact of the power and lots of wars and things going on because of um, fossil fuels that are in those kind of war torn countries. And obviously we know the environmental impact, the CO2, the greenhouse gases, um, the greenhouse gases that are are released when they are burned. So finite fossil fuels are bad news, but they do have some advantages. They are very reliable. So if you think about things like a wind turbine, it's only going to be producing energy when it's windy. Surprise, surprise. So it tends to be relatively reliable. Um, and the running cost of these power plants that create the electricity is quite low and the extraction of the coal and the oil and the gas is relatively low. Um, so, you know, it's all about money, money, money. Um, and these companies want to be able to produce reliable power at a low cost. So that's why these finite um, sources are prioritised. Um, we have also got nuclear power. Let me just delete these little bits over here. Nuclear power um, has some big advantages. It is very reliable, very cheap or inexpensive, and it's really clean. It uh, doesn't give off very much um, CO2 or environmental, you know, greenhouse gases. But if there is um, something that goes wrong, for example, a major catastrophe like in Chernobyl or in uh, Japan when that happened um, about 10 years ago now, I think. Um, the, it is a major catastrophe with huge fallout and nuclear uh, radiation, which can last for hundreds of years. Um, the waste is very dangerous. They can cost a lot to build. Um, and also they do actually use finite resources. They use uranium and uranium won't last forever. So nuclear power, it uses nuclear fission, which is very, very, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Very efficient in producing lots and lots of heat, which again creates steam, which drives the turbines. Last one, very, very quickly, is obviously the non-finite. Um, there are big advantages and disadvantages. Advantages being um, they have a smaller environmental impact. It's clean energy. And after the initial setup cost, the energy provided is usually uh, usually free. You know, it's um, it's if, if you get a solar power, a solar panel on your house, it's going to help reduce the cost of any of your sort of bills. The disadvantages, the setup cost is relatively low, uh, sorry, relatively high. So it takes a while to pay back that initial expense. It's very reliant on have you got sun? Have you got wind? Have you got these external um, forces that you need to actually generate the energy. Some people actually think that it spoils the landscape. So all of the, the big windmills that go up, they think that that is that kind of um, mars the landscape. And sometimes um, they can have quite a big impact on the environment. Things like dams um, and those windmills can actually disrupt um, nature in terms of like flocks of birds. They give off a vibration. So they can also have um, an environmental impact, if not um, smaller than using finite like coal, gas, oil, that kind of stuff. Right. So now that we're moving towards renewable energy, why are we doing that? I've seen a question like this um, come up before in the exam, which asked why? Why is there an increase? An increase in the use of renewable energy. I've seen this as a question before in an exam, a GCSE exam. And one of the reasons is that we now are more aware that um, burning fossil fuels is very, very damaging to the environment. So we have more awareness. Um, it's also 
much better for us to learn how to get by without fossil fuels because they are running out. We need to come up with some alternatives. You know, we need to make that change quite soon. Um, also, the technology has improved. So, for example, um, it used to be that we couldn't get much power from some of these areas. But now because of improvements in tech, they are becoming a lot more efficient and much more um, feasible. And what I mean by that is that more it's more uh, realistic to say that you're going to have power generated by solar power when before it might have been only a small amount that you would have been able to generate. Um, also, there are pressure from other countries and the public and also from the government um, that we need to be hitting targets to make sure that a certain percentage of our energy is from clean sources. So, you know, there's pressure from other countries. So, for example, as the UK, Europe and America putting pressure on places like China and India, although the USA are terrible for things like this, but China and India, which use a huge amount of uh, fossil fuels, we're trying to get them to reduce their carbon emissions. So those are all reasons and could be good answers for this kind of question here. Why is there an increase in the use of renewable energy? Right, we'll go over that because we've kind of spoken about that. Last couple of things I'm going to talk about are this odd thing here. So there's something um, for, for actually storing energy rather than just creating it and it, it disappearing. There are different ways of storing energy. So things like uh, batteries. So the two different types of batteries, you've got alkaline batteries. So these run out. OK, and they need to be thrown away. And then we have renewable or rechargeable batteries, I should say, sorry. So these need to be can be charged back up. And they are reusable. So better for the environment. OK, so those are two different ways of generating energy. And obviously our phones use something called a lithium um, battery. And that's a type of rechargeable battery. So moving towards rechargeable batteries is much better for the environment rather than using these throwaway batteries. And there's also this weird thing called a kinetic pumped storage system. OK, so here's a little bit of background for it. Most large power stations run all night, meaning extra electricity is generated. Now, you've got the, the grid at the time. So the UK does not need to use all of that energy at once. So it needs to be stored. So the best way to store it um, for when it's needed in peak demand, so kind of like in that time between like 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. when we're all making cups of tea and all that sort of stuff, um, we need to be able to to quickly generate or, or use the stored energy energy from um, these power stations that have been running all night. So the way it works is spare electricity is used to pump water um, up a hill, basically, um, during the night. And what happens is the electricity pumps the water up into an upper reservoir and it's held there until it's needed. So it takes a bit of energy to pump that water up into this upper reservoir from this bottom one. Now, when it's needed, so say it is like the advert in, or it's half time in a Premier League game or something, everyone gets up and puts a cup of tea on, suddenly the UK needs a huge amount more energy. So what happens is they release this water from up here, it rushes down and it spins this turbine, generating a load of extra electricity that helps to um, boost um, the supply that's already being generated. So you've got a way of storing energy um, so that when peak time hits, you can actually use this system um, to generate electricity so that the, we basically don't have um, power cuts. OK, so that I've seen that come up in the exam before. It's a tiny bit of the specification, um, but hopefully that makes sense. Last couple of things we're going to talk about are batteries. Um, so different types of battery types. I'm just going to rub this away for a second because so you can see the notes underneath. So there are two different types of batteries. 
there are some key facts and some common uses here. I won't talk about this for too long because we've kind of just spoken about, about it. Alkaline batteries are normally disposable. Um, they are recyclable, apparently. Um, fair enough. Um, but they last a long time and they leak less than some disposable batteries. But their power output gradually decreases over time. So they will they all they will sort of just slowly run out of power. Um, rechargeable batteries, they can be charged when they go flat, uh, more expensive, um, but cheaper in the long run because you can kind of keep recharging them. Better for the environment because, yes, they can be recycled, but actually I bet a lot of them just go into bins and their power output remains quite constant. So. These kind of alkaline batteries, the throwaway ones used in toys, remote controls, torches, clocks and rechargeable batteries, mobile phones, laptops, electric cars. And these are your lithium uh, batteries. OK, I hope that was useful. That was all about generating power. I'll see you on the next video.